What's up guys, John Osumi here from Motion Shooter Photography. I wasn't sure what to expect on my first duck boat tour, so I decided to go with my 70-200. to Knowing the vehicle is moving and possibly bouncy, I picked to go with a shutter speed of 1 1250th of a second with an aperture mostly at f2.8. ISO was set to auto so I could be sure to get the shots that were in bright sunlight and also the ones that were in the shade. I hope you enjoy this duck boat tour of Boston. If the British had left Boston via Boston Neck on the extreme southern tip of the Old City, the only land route in or out of the Old City would have been one lantern that was put up on the steeple of the Old North Church. But it wasn't. It was two. That meant that the British had left Boston via the Charles River. Again, another shot of it. That's where the lanterns were hung up. You know how big the lanterns were? They were this big. You know how big the candle was in each lantern? As big as my jump. They were very, very close to the water line. Very, very close to where the Patriots in Charlestown were waiting for the message. That's probably the reason why they're... Otherwise, it would have been a different world, a whole different organization. Everything would have changed. It would have been Coming up on our left-hand side, you're going to see a blue tarpaulin. It is covering one of the most important buildings of the American Revolution. And I really believe that the city fathers of this fair little town of ours, Boston, had put that blue tarpaulin up to protect it from the prying eyes of possible British spies. <laughs> Either that, or I figure if the people are looking at this too many times, it'll wear it out. Train. So it's the cradle of liberty for who? That's what we have here. In front of us we had where the Boston Massacre took place. It was not a massacre. We used it as propaganda. There were eight British troops. They had to fire into a crew of 500 colonials that were ripping them to pieces. They had to fire in self-defense. It was definitely not a massacre. 7,000 people living in the entire Shawmut Peninsula. From that balcony, the Declaration of Independence was read to the people of Boston for the very first time. That was July 18, 1776. It's been used to fill in the harbor and fill in the old bell dam. Over here on the left-hand side, you're going to see a church. That is the first Anglican church that was built on that site. It was made when it was 1688. This is the second Anglican church built on that site. It was the first granite building in Boston and the, the second church built on that site, 1752. Across the street, you've got the Omni Parker House Hotel. Malcolm X was a busboy in that hotel, 1943. Ho Chi Minh from Vietnam worked at the pastry department at that hotel at the beginning of the 20th century land room here out of the old city. It's right around the corner. Like I said, it's Washington Street today, right here. That's, this is all the extreme southern tip of the old city. Nothing to your left, just the Charles River. To the horizon, you can see nothing but the Charles River. And in front of us, you've got Beacon Hill, but after that, there's nothing there but the Charles River. Miles and miles and miles during Revolutionary Boston. We over here, on your right-hand side, is the Boston Common here. And this was chartered in 1634 by the original group of Puritans that settled here in 1630. Over to your, on your left, however, you have the Boston Public Garden. 25 acres of land, it's about half the size of the common. This was chartered in 1837. And if you do the math, you're going to realize that 203 years separate these two gardens. Bar. Right over here on the right hand side, check out the green lights. To the right of the green lights is the Cheers Bar. However, let me warn you, although the Cheers Bar has still got its original flavor, it's a lot of fun. Inside, it has nothing to do with Cheers. I was in traction for 17 years and you put me in a locker room, I couldn't believe it. At a time when men were five foot six, 
George Washington was six foot two. Look at the size of this guy. He was admittedly a big... Does anybody remember the sweet life of Zack and Cody? No way. Uh, there it is. You see there? You see there's the dog. There's the two lions. There's the dog was pulled up right next to the lion. And there's the dog house that is the Tipton Hotel. That's cool. The Boston Public Library just to my right until a second or two is passed if we keep on driving but if we stopped in the middle of boylston street you wouldn't see the right or the left side you'd only see that narrow you do that you're going to see the big wall disappear behind the narrow strip of glass at the front 21 1807 you would have seen three red brick buildings here that was the original campus of massachusetts institute of Over here on the left-hand side, you've got to what was called the Boston Society of Natural History. It became so big and so stuffed with things, they had to move it over to Cambridge. And there it became the Museum of Science. Coming up on our left is going to be the oldest, uh, well, it's the first major building built in the back bay. Uh, and they were extending it from east to west. Uh, it's the old uh, Arlington Street Church. First major yeah. building built in See the brownstone. That is called Boston brownstone. The brownstone is decomposing as it sits there. There's nothing they can do about it. You see the chafing, the cracking, the mortar joints falling apart, pieces of cement dangling on the shelf. Look over here, over here on the left-hand side. Just beyond that, you can see that where that block has been patched and it falls apart. And they patch it and it falls apart. One of the problems, and it has many, is that it's very poor. And it absorbs moisture and the moisture freezes in the winter and everything falls apart. There's a thousand of these lamps. We have extinguish them. It's too expensive. You extinguish it in the morning and relight them at night. You'd have a thousand people running around, right? And, so, and you can't do it one size fits all, so the, we leave them lit all the time by Bullfinch. It has a 23 karat gold foil dome. Statehouse. It's truly magnificent. You know what that gold weighs that's on the dome of the state house? 13 pounds. Can you believe it? I couldn't believe it. Across the street from the main entrance of the state house is our homage to the Massachusetts 54th Regiment. That's the first all black, all volunteer regiment to fight for the Union cause in the Civil War. Get the movie Glory. I'm tired of sitting there, so they gave her a ladder. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, duh. I couldn't resist it. She became a Quaker. The Puritans hand her. Because she was now a daughter of the devil. A sister of Satan. And you can tell by that ladder they gave it to her so she could climb out of her. Does anybody remember Harriet Beecher Stowe and Uncle Tom's cabin? It was Liam Beecher. He was the pastor of St. John the Evangelist Church. It's this dark, gray, foreboding, haunted, with werewolves crawling around inside. The most scariest piece of architecture I've seen in the entire city. It is haunted beyond any shadow of a doubt. Say, Louie, what are you talking about? How do you know it's haunted? I'll tell you how I know it's haunted. 
I drop people off there all the time. I never see them again. <laughs> Buddy, this is the time. 